Hello, welcome, delighted that you're here. Each week you'll meet a lady who will be sharing her story with you, and the intention is that you will be entertained, motivated, and inspired to share yours. It's time for women to rise and stand in heart-centered leadership. Join with us and stay tuned. We don't disappoint. Welcome to Leading Ladies, Leaving Legacies. It's Wednesday night, and every Wednesday night, I bring you a featured leading lady, Leaving Legacies. And tonight, our featured guest is Dr. Sarah B. Hart. And I'm going to bring her up in just a moment because we're going to be talking about a lot of things that are interesting today, because for women, it's definitely our time. And we're going to talk about how to prime spark right here and right now, I am Joy Ruffin, a style and leadership coach, speaker, signature style specialist, executive producer, TV host, and podcaster. And yes, my friends, it is all aligned. But tonight, we're going to be talking with Dr. Sarah Hart, and we're going to talk to her about Prime Spark, and we're going to really find out more about that name and everything about her that will benefit you on your journey. So help me welcome our featured guest tonight, Sarah. I cannot tell you how honored I am to have you with us tonight. Welcome. Thank you, Joy. This is wonderful. I'm so happy to be here with you. You're no happier than I am to have you here because first off, I love the name Prime Spark. P-R-I-M-E-S-P-A-R-K. Could you have been more eloquent in naming this group, this podcast, this everything? Tell us how you came to that name. <laughs> well, it was fun. I um decided at one point that I wanted to work with and on behalf of older women. Yes. And I was working with a coach then, and she said to me, oh, Sarah, your golden years. And I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I did just like that. And she was just, whoo, whoo, whoo. Um, we're, we're in our prime Women in their 50s, 60s, and beyond are in their prime. It didn't used to be true, but that is true now. Absolutely. So, um, I thought prime. We are in our prime. And my goal is to help women find that spark deep inside them that we can either refuel or reignite or ignite that will take them into the future in whatever way is meaningful for them and meaningful for others. And so I thought, okay, I want to I want to ignite that spark deep inside women where that dream lies that may have been there for years. Um and I thought spark prime spark prime spark <laughs> Prime Spark. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it for so many multifaceted reasons, Sarah, because it is my humble belief, and it's not so humble anymore. Women are going to be the ones who are going to be in the forefront of changing this universe that we're in. That is my belief. And we have, as older, mature women, whatever verbiage you choose to use, I like to say happy senior for me, but it's the same as a prime spark, how you ignite yourself. That's so important because oftentimes, because it's a male dominated world, we have been put way, way on the back burner. So tell us, when did you decide, you said you were working with coaches and they said golden and that kind of, woo. when did you really decide that this was exactly what you needed to do, you had to do as part of your purpose? One day I was sitting in the, the um, examining office of a doctor Yes. And he came in with his iPad or tablet or whatever it was. And he never looked at me. And I know what he was saying was old woman on his iPad. He saw my age and just thought old woman. So he never looked at me. And he said, why are you here? And I said, I have a pain in my calves when I walk. And he said, still looking at his iPad, still not looking at me. He said, well, how far do you want to walk? And I said, I'd like to do as close to 10,000 steps a day as I can. And he said, ah, I have patients who can't get to their front door and back to get their mail. What you need to do is find a path that has benches so you can sit down. 
And I didn't say what I was thinking. But I wish I had, and today I would. But at that point, I wanted to say, George, last year I did the California AIDS life cycle ride. It's a bicycle ride from San Francisco to Los Angeles, 545 miles. Don't tell me to find a path with benches. <laughs> and what I wanted was for him to help me learn how I could walk without such pain. Exactly. And all he wanted was for me to sit down. And I thought, and that was after several kinds of things had happened. I thought, okay, that's it. That's 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 not good. That's not how we should be treated. We're that's, not we're not doing this anymore. We're we're taking a stand. Well, you know, I am completely and totally in alignment with what you just shared with us because I use other verbiage, but it's the same thing. When we reach a certain age, it's very difficult for most of us because unfortunately we become invisible and we become not seen. We're not seen, we're not valued. A lot of that though has to do because we began to diminish our own value because we, we began to bleed and buy into all of this nonsense, Sarah. So what you're doing is why I'm applauding and celebrating you. You're saying to women, no, this is a prime time. This is when we rise. This is when we soar. This is when we begin to stand in our power because it's still there. And my thing from the outside, inside out, but I love the work that you're doing. What have you found thus far? I'm sure there are numerous things, but what are the one, two, three things that you can share with us that you find that you have been able to share with women to give them the seed of knowing that it's just beginning, it's not over. What would you say? Well, I think that it's I, I just what you said uh, uh, right then, Joy. I mean, what I realized at one point, I mean, the mission of Prime Spark is to change the way our society sees and treats older women. Yes. And what I realized was, well, society's not going to see us differently until we see ourselves differently. And so what I help women do is understand that they have at this point in their life, the, the most skills and experience and wisdom. And I agree with what you said a little bit ago about how older women are going to be in the forefront of changing things because of this amazing, these amazing gifts we have at this point in our life. So I'm, I help women understand all of the value they have that they may not see. So that's a first step. Um, and then I encourage them to stop saying themselves and stop letting other people say ageist comments. So we don't any longer say, oh, well, that was a senior moment. <laughs> you know, 30 year olds forget things too. And so we don't allow ageist comments to come out of our mouths and we don't allow other people to say it without, you know, calling them on it. We don't do that with racist remarks or sexist remarks. And it's time now to do it with ageist remarks. Uh, so I encourage women to do that. And then I encourage them to really pay attention to all of the information that's hitting them day by day by day that's trying to tell them who they are and what they're like at this point in their lives so all you need to do is look through any magazine at the ads and it's it's mostly if it's older women they're needing help of some kind and we all need help sometimes but look at us we don't need help all the time um, and so I encourage women to look at that so they get conscious of what are these messages that are bomb bombarding me every day. Yes. You know, you spoke so much there, that, but one of the things, the aging remarks that are so common, and you say everyone forgets senior moments and all that stuff. But you also spoke to something that's everything that you said. But when we talk about the skills and the experience and the wisdom that we bring to the table. Here's what I know for sure, Sarah, with certainty and conviction, because I've seen it, I know it. I almost became a juvenile delinquent girl myself. Our young people need us more than ever because meaning older, we need each other because 
so many are committing, the suicide rate is higher than it's ever been because too many of us who are riding around in the bubble, bubble, not you, not me, and buy into this aging nonsense, this is the prime time. And they need us, meaning the younger generation, and we need them. I need them for technology, which is not my strong suit, and so much more. That's why I love what you're saying about the skills, the experience, and the wisdom that we bring. And everything is a dance and a two-way extreme that you go back and forth. So that's good. And the aging remarks, forget it. Who needs that? What have you found though? What is the number one thing you find that women who are mature, and I'm bringing into this equation for you and you give me back your feedback, confidence. Somehow, no matter how confident you are up until that prime time for you that it begins to seed for you, some of that confidence begins to become erased. It disappears. Why do you think that is? Is that because we bought into the bubble, those who did? What happens there? I want to understand what you just said, Joy. So you're thinking that as we get a bit older, we lose the confidence we did have? I, I see that, Sarah, among a lot of women who have a fake facade about their confidence level because they're still attempting to be forever young. And we can't be forever young. We can be forever youthful in our projection, our mindset, our outlook. But we have to learn to dance with what we have at the moment. And that's what so many of us have not done or not doing. So what I'm asking you is how many of the women that you work with and that you meet are coming to you where you find because of this ageism and all of this nonsense that comes about that what are they dealing with in, at their confidence level? Have you found that that's diminished somewhat or you find that it's escalated? Both. Both. Um, both. Um, well, it's good. One of, yes. One of the things I see that I think is really sad is, are women who have um, been largely homemakers and they've raised children. They have managed households. They've managed budget budgets. They've managed several calendars simultaneously. They've probably been on countless committees and boards and, and, and uh, event planning and now they're at a point, the kids are grown and many gone and they look around and they don't feel they have any skills. And that is so sad because they have all of these amazing skills that they developed throughout this lifetime. And we devalue, well, that whole, that whole mother bit is a double-edged sword for women. Because yes. um, we, we, we say you must be a mother, you must take care of your children. That's the highest calling of women. And then, um, that is that all you did? And so it's a double-edged double sword. And for women who get to be a bit older, then they feel, now that that's done, they don't have any skills. So I see that loss of confidence. On the other hand, I talk to a lot of older women. And when I asked them, are you aware of getting older? 95%, I don't know that that's accurate, but I mean, it's a lot. I know what you mean. Yeah. Say, well, physically, I feel I'm getting older. I have some aches and pains that I didn't used to have. But other than that, I feel better than I've ever felt. I feel more me. I feel more of, I feel more freedom. I care less about what other people think. And so, we're sort of, my experience is was sort of all over the board with that. The women, and you said this, Joy, the women that I find that are having the most difficulty are the ones that are trying to be 30 when they're 60. And that's Im impossible. And one of the things I've learned, and this took me a while to learn this, was when I would talk to women about Prime Spark, every once in a while there would be a woman who would get really mad at me. <laughs> And I, I didn't understand it. No. I didn't think I had been rude or said anything, you know. And finally, one of those women said to me, Sarah, I don't want to think about getting older. And I thought, oh, I get it. I get it now. Yes. Yet if you don't want to think about getting older, then you're not going to want to hear about Prime Spark. Yeah. Okay. So those are the women 
that in my experience are having the most difficulty. And, and you know, it's very sad because it's getting it's, older is such a gift. There are so many women in the world who don't have the opportunity to get older and it is better than the alternative. And so absolutely. Um, oh my God, Sarah, you're speaking to the choir and you, you came back with exactly what I wanted you to speak to because when it comes to our femininity and our sexuality and our sensuality, if we are buying into the Hollywood, Hollywood is great. I love Hollywood. I love the entertainment industry, except it's not our world. It's all about being young forever. It's all about sex. And it's all about skin that glows and all of that other stuff. And by the time a woman is 30, God forbid 40, she's out of there with always few exceptions. And that's why, but that means Sarah, that women, those women that you're talking to who get angry with you for whatever the reasons are, which you explain, that's because they bought into that dream. Right. And they are not in sync with the real gifts that they're given in the aging process. And these are the women I want to reach and you want to reach as well. Because what you said about it being a gift, aging, it is. As one of my friends said, we rise every morning, we're still vertical. It's a gift. It's a blessing. That's right. Now, what do you feel and what do you think about when you, you mentioned it somewhat, to speak a wee bit more about it, about the, the anti-aging. This is a big blast in the advertising arena now, anti-aging. You know, you can't have a line here and a line there and this here can and whatever, boom, boom, boom. It's life, it happens. But what do you have to say to women who are afraid of growing old and keeping them in the prime spark mindset outlook? How do you approach them? Well, I think um, one of the things I tell them and sometimes it depends, Joy, it depends on where that, it's a fear is what it is and it depends on where that fear lives. But one of the things I talk about is that I heard somebody say that anti-aging is like anti-breathing. I mean, we start, we start aging from the minute we're born. I mean, that's just the way it is. And so if, if, if I'm working with women and if I can help them see all the things they have and do and understand now that they didn't when they were 30 or 40. So look at the gains rather than the losses, because those columns just don't match up. Because so much in the loss column doesn't have anything to do with us and how we really are or feel about ourselves. It's what our society has told us that is worthwhile and what's not worthwhile. And it's bogus. It is bogus. Um, it and, is bogus. And so to help, it's, well, we come back to what we both were talking about. I mean, it's an inside job and you just have to help women understand the amazing contributions they can make at this yes. point that they couldn't make when they were 35. Ah, Sarah, you ended just the way I wanted you to. And let me share, I'm going to take a quick break, but let me leave you with this. And when we come back, we'll talk about this a wee bit more. And I want to be here about your podcast and other things, but one of the people, I can never remember who said this. I bet you can, though. She said, aging is inevitable. Growing old is optional. And then aligned with that, Sarah, one of my friends said to me in one speech that I did somewhere, I don't recall, and she came up to me later and she said, you know, Joy, a lot of people grow old and they never grow up. This is what you and I are about avoiding for women, especially because there's nothing wrong with the aging factor. So that said, keep that in mind. We'll speak to that when I come back. Let me take a quick little break and I'll be back with you in just a second. All right. Thank you for that. Yes, I love that. Let me just say to you that it's always good when you can show up here. I know how busy we all are. I also want to invite you next Thursday. I want you to go to my Facebook business page and there you will find my event that's coming up for April the 21st, which is next Thursday at 4.30. It's a leading lady featured guest speaker who's going to come and talk to you about some really dynamic things that Sarah and I are highlighting somewhat tonight. She's going to probe deep into that transitioning and that transforming from the inside out, which is what most of us are in the process, a journey, and it never ends of always being about. So join us there. And the other thing I'd like to ask you to do is to join my Facebook group, Leading Ladies, Leaving Legacies. You belong there.
And we're always open and available for good, yummy conversations. Because like Sarah and I are having this conversation tonight, I invite you there. And once you become a member, you'll be apprised of all the different phenomenal, fantastic things that we're doing for women who are second act, second chapter, midlife. This is verbiage, regardless of age, people and women who want to rise and soar into their gifts that they were given. And that's a promise. That's a given. So that said, join me next Thursday, the 21st. In the meantime, I'm going to get back to Sarah. And what I want to talk about now, I don't recall, Sarah, who said that, but I bet you do. Aging is inevitable. Growing old is optional. I just think I, I use that everywhere because I think it's so true. Not because I'm a happy senior. I think I felt that way 20 years ago. But the truth is, we as women, and you use the word that I wanted to get back to, so many women fear it. And they fear it because all of their when we're young, we get away with everything. Would you agree with that? More or less, more or less. More so we, now. Yeah. Now, you know, as we age, things happen to the body and you have to learn to dance with that body and make it appealing and attractive in a way that fits your persona, lifestyle and everything else. Tell us a little bit about your prime spark. I think you said every other week podcast that you do and how are you engaging and bringing in women to connect with you there? Well, it's a lot of fun. Um, I uh, a couple of years ago, I had an online radio show for about a year um, on Prime Smart, and I love doing it. Yes. Uh, and so when uh, when podcasting became such a thing, I thought I think I'd like to do that too. So I invite uh, women who are um, doing something um, in the uh, aging ageist arena. Um, it might, they may be authors, they may be um, teachers. Um, uh, the last podcast I had was with a wonderful woman who is in Fort Collins, and, uh, Colorado, and has a, a um, side of a building with uh, that highlights the um, women of Fort Collins and Colorado who have been outstanding. So it's women who are taking a stance and doing something. Yes. And it's, yes. it's, it's really fun. Um, well, it's remarkable. I'm sure it is. And one of the reasons I align with you, because you advocate champion and you empower women, especially women who are at that prime spark level stage, whatever that might be. Also, you have written a book and they can purchase this book. But tell us a little bit about the upside of downsizing, getting to enough. I love the title. Getting oh. to enough. Share yes. with us that. <laughs> That was um, a book that I wrote several years ago now. And yeah. I went through a major downsizing myself of my home. And I went from a four bedroom house to a one bedroom apartment with, yes. no, with no storage. Mm -hmm. And I had to get rid of mounds of stuff. I mean, what? literally mounds of stuff. <gasps> oh. and, um, it was hard. It was very painful. And so I started writing about it. And I, what I realized was the universe was giving me the opportunity to get to what for me was enough. And that was important to me because since the mid 1990s, I've had a personal project called the sign of enough. And it's designed to help us answer the question, how will I know when I have enough? Now, I know that a lot of us don't have enough, but a lot of us have way more than enough. And I am right here in the middle of Silicon Valley where there are, I maybe the most billionaires in the world gathered in one place. That's what they say. And there are still people who are hungry here. And so I think, how do we know when we have enough? And so that's where that title came from. So Sarah, I don't for you me, come up with the best titles. Yeah, the upside of downsizing is getting to enough. Ah, I love that. The size of enough. The and size. Time, the size, S-I-Z-E, right? No, S-I-G-N. Oh, a sign. Oh. We all have a sign. Yes. We all have a sign of this is enough. And it may be the day that you that you can't get one more pair of socks in the drawer. Or it may be the day, if you're talking about how I know when I have enough food, it may be the day when you can't get that top button on your pants buttoned. Okay, that's a sign. That's enough. That's enough. 
or it may be work. You know, when you when, when your child says, "You haven't been to any of my games this year," that may be a sign that I've had enough work. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm glad for that slip because I thought it was S I Z E. It's S I G N. They're right. both good, but the way that you're expressing and explaining it, much more powerful. Much more powerful. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. And then the name. Prime Spark. I mean, you come up with all of these names. Tell me, what is your, what is your dream? What is your ultimate aim and goal? What is a legacy that you want to leave for women like myself, who are prime, happy seniors, whatever verbiage you choose to use, mature, but ready to be impactful to others, to support them in their evolving and growing and expanding where they are now? What do you want to leave us with? What do you want to share with us that will be inspirational to, to motivational to those like us, like me? Well, what I see, Joy, is that we are in the second women's movement of my lifetime. Yes. We did this in the 60s and 70s, and we're going to do it again. And so what I see is being part of that movement. And so Prime Spark for me is part of the movement of changing the way women are seen in our society, the way they see themselves, the opportunities they have, just like we did in the 60s and 70s. That work's not done, but now we're in the place that we are age-wise, and so we're in a new place. And um, I think that one of the things that goes through my mind, and I will clean this up, because I'm not sure about the audience, but <laughs> I no longer take BS from anybody and neither should you. No, neither do I. <laughs> neither do I. And I love the way you said this is the second go round because the first go, I applaud and celebrate Gloria Steinem. I do. But I knew even then after I began to see what was happening, I didn't want to stand in a man's world with the attitude and persona of a male outlook and projection. I wanted all my femininity and my charm and whatever to show through. And it can still without the two B's and the V being there. So, I mean, showcasing that. So I get what you're saying. And I love what you're saying about this is one of the beauties about wisdom and aging, whatever, however you want to apply it. We no longer take bull, S-H-I-T, I spell it out. Yeah, no, I mean, me. Gloria Steinem was very feminine. I mean, she was portrayed not not as feminine, but she was. If you if you see her, she was beautiful. She she was she was a very feminine woman, and the the press made her out to be well. Most women at that point during those years, most women who were real feminists were portrayed to be lesbians. Yes, yes, and yes, yes. And there's nothing wrong with being a lesbian, but hey, listen, quite the two. Yeah. Um, well, this is this is what happens in the entertainment, uh, publicity, advertising media. They can take anything and string it into what they want it to be. And most people are gullible enough to buy it. But the point that I was making is that I like what you said about this is the second half of the movement, because that's where we're at. Sarah, I cannot tell you the time flies here. It's gone and it's over. Are there any parting words or gems that you'd like to leave us with? I've been scrolling across your name, your website, and your email in hopes that people who are interested to learn and get more will be able to get to you. So give us whatever parting words you want to share with us as we say so long for now. Yeah, I think it's just um, for, for women who are older, be proud of it and um, just Revel in who you are. Um, really get in touch with what you have to offer because you're brilliant at this point. And there's not been a time in my life when our world more needed your wisdom and skills and experience. So get out and make a difference in whatever way is important to you. You don't have to be in the world if you don't want to think of yourself as a world changer. Teach one child to read. Just anything where you're using the best part of you to make the world a better place. Beautiful and brilliant. Thank you, Sarah. You could not have ended on a better note. Thank you so much. I'm going to put you in the green room, say so long for now, and thank you. I'll be with you in just a second. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, and thank you.
oh my goodness, her ending, there's nothing else to say, except for me to say, it's always great to see you here. I enjoy your company, good company. And I know that you tune in and you listen when you can, because I see the numbers. Be and stay well, wear the mask if you still have to. And whatever you do, get in alignment and connect with other women, because we all need each other. Forget about the age range and just connect with the heart and the soul and the purpose and the essence of that person that you want to connect with. Sending you much love and all the best. See you soon until we connect. All the best. So long for now. Cheers. <laughs> well, okay. Leading ladies, leaving legacies, not ever goodbye. Why? Because it's our time. Join us as we move onward and upward in style. Connect with me on my website. I can't wait to meet you. Make it soon.